Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Good Morning Soul. And in my How I Got Into series, I always like to delve into, like, my past and kind of, like, what jump-started. Like, what were the franchises? What were the stories? What were the little moments that led up to me becoming, like, obsessed with that art medium? Like, how I got into anime, how I got into reading, all of that. Like, it all allowed me to become the, uh, the anime watchers and the readers. Like, that's how I became those today. But how I got into music is a little bit more cringy uh, in terms of, like, what artists I was listening to. I do remember, like, as a kid, like, I thought people who were into music were just cool. Like, I remember, like making a list of things I should like wear or buy to appear cool like that's, I was trying to be a cool kid in elementary school so I was like may I'll buy like a CD player and like I'll like try to get into music and any music I liked back then was like rock music like uh, in wrestling they would promote like these rock songs that aren't getting really into some of it like saliva stuff like that and obviously um, stuff that was like on the radio, just stuff that was reaching my ears interests me. And I think if I was to point out like the earliest stuff that I liked, it would be like that. Like Three Days Grace, Evanescence, um, what are you, like Breaking Benjamin, like that type of shit. And I think that's what a lot of people like go through in their early music listening uh, career. Like, and I've done, like, uh, what did I review? I reviewed, like, uh, Relic Hearts, Volatile, which is an album that isn't, like, um, it isn't uh, an early rock band, but it has that sound of, like, the early stuff that I listened to. Like, that would, that's what I would describe as, like, standard rock music for me. Like, Three Days Grace and all that. Like, anything that would be used for, like, AMVs, like, or at least AMVs that appear across the board, like Disturbed, even, stuff like that is basic rock music to me. And so, that was kind of like the first thing I was brought up on. And then, my brother's LimeWire account allowed me to, like, he downloaded LimeWire, which is this old, uh, like, version of, it's like iTunes, but like, a lot more sketchy and illegal, and it would have so many more problems, because... This is like back when music was first starting to appear on the internet and people, like the floodgates weren't just open back then. It was a lot more just like music labels like really trying to govern like what people are listening to, really trying to stop people from streaming and illegally downloading music. Whereas nowadays it's much more of a, like I can probably just Google download newest fucking album by biggest fucking artist ever and I'll probably find something. Like, that's just, you're, you're more likely to find that than uh, not finding it. So, that, that's kind of like where, what I was listening to a lot, what was on his LimeWire. And that would be um, some weird just bands that he was into that I'd never really listened to. Comedy stuff, like The Lonely Island, Weird Al. Like, I, I always enjoyed comedy music and stuff like that. But I was never, like, really into any of it. Like, I never, like, took time out of my day to, like, listen to this stuff. I would just, like, throw it on once in a while and I enjoyed it. I wasn't into music. Like, nowadays, like, I'm into music. I will fill up any white noise of my day with music. If I'm, like, cleaning dishes, if I'm going on a car ride, no matter, like, what it is, if I can listen to music during that point in time, I probably will. I was, I literally, in between takes of when I'm recording this, I'm playing music, like, as I'm, like, exporting and editing the audio, and that only, like, takes however many minutes, so those few minutes of white noise I'm filling with music, but back in the day, I didn't do that. Um, so after, like, the, after my brother's LimeWire and that computer went away, like, 
like I said, we didn't have a computer growing up. I meant it. Like we didn't have like any internet. Like the small internet we had, like was able to get those songs and then never any songs ever again. Uh, so I remember burning a couple CDs, um, and I remember like kind of other people's music influences rubbing off on me a little bit. Like my brother's music has always kind of rubbed off on me. And then like some people at school's music, like I remember um, my friend Solomon, I remember like he was listening to early Kendrick, uh, Joey Badass, some of like some old school shit. Um, Well, not old school shit, but nowadays it's like old school shit. Uh, Kid Cudi, that kind of stuff. And I made I made him make me a CD. I made uh, my brother. I basically just kind of took his CD, which had like a bunch of Mac Miller, a bunch of Wiz Khalifa. Like I was able to get into like Mac Miller and Wiz Khalifa and like that kind of like early 2010s like stoner rap and just you know rap in general because not only because that stuff was so popular that it was on the radio. Wiz Khalifa was on the radio a lot back then. But, you know, I was never, like, I was never able to become a part of the culture. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't the one who was, you know, going out smoking to fucking Wiz Khalifa back in the early days. I wasn't that guy. But I was able to appreciate it from afar. And then, I, during, like, my, when I was, like, my early internet YouTube watching days when I was like 14, 15, let's say. Uh, I finally had a computer, you know, I was able to get an iTunes account. I remember the first artist I would say I really got into was a rapper called Hobson. And Hobson puts out some good stuff. And a lot of his older stuff, like, I do remember with fondness, and I can see why it's good but he's become the most cringy the worst like one of the worst rappers out right now he's so cringy and like a lot of what he raps about is like stuff a 14 year old like would enjoy like breaking like these groundbreaking thoughts about um life and god and uh, like he has a song about his friend who like got into drugs and He has so many songs that are like that, that are very preachy, very, you know, there's no, there's no other meaning you can derive than the meaning he's specifically talking about. Like, if he was to make a song about the sun being hot, then the lyrics would be, the sun is hot. It wouldn't be like, on, like, you have to, like, water these things to the point where it's adaptable, right? Like, people can take this context and use it for other things. Like, I can take your energy and use it to work out. Your energy about this thing. But if your energy is specifically, like, if you're specifically rapping about, like, how your fucking baby mama is, like, not letting you see your kid. Obviously, I can't really use that energy because that's not going, like, I'm going to be thinking about that while I'm trying to work out. Like, I'm not trying to think about that. If you were just, like, to, like, say, oh, this person, or whatever, I'm upset, like, he's very specific, and I, I used to be into it, but I kind of quickly got out of Hobson, and my next guy was Eminem. Eminem was kind of, like, in the YouTube comments, like, being described as the greatest rapper of all time. So I was like, let me, let me be the judge of that. So I went through literally like the way I used to and still sometimes listen to music is going through an artist's like whole discography. I'll just be like really into one artist at a time, another artist. And I think some people do that, but I was burning through all of Eminem's work. Um, Like the Eminem show was like my favorite album by his because I really liked the song Till I Collapse. I really liked... um, You know, I didn't mind recovery, relapse, you know, it was all right. I hated Encore, still hate Encore. Um, And right when I was, like, finishing this, like, going through his whole discography and really learning all of his songs, um, that's when the Marshall Mathers LP2 dropped back in, like, 2013. And, like, this is ironic because Eminem just had another album that recently came out that was really awful. But before that came out, this was his latest project, and it was actually pretty good. And, like, pretty good for Eminem is, like, phenomenal. 
<laughs> uh, like, if there's a pretty good Eminem song, then his fans will eat it up like it's no tomorrow. And I was certainly one of those people. And a lot of the hooks on there are kind of corny. He's got Skylar Gray on there. He's got Rihanna on there. V some corny hooks, but the hooks on there aren't bad. Like, the, the Rihanna one works for a pop song. The one survival, that works for a song to play Call of Duty to, which is how it was marketed as. Um, and what else? And uh, the one of Skylar Gray was a filler track, and who really cares about that one? I know there was a really bad track on there called Stronger Than I Was, where Eminem is singing, and it's terrible, but it was still, it was still an amazing album. I wouldn't say amazing, but like to me at the time, it was amazing. And I still consider that his best work, on terms of my like subjective opinion. Like, the most songs, like I really fuck with Berserk, I really fuck with Rap God, even if like parts of it are annoying. I really fuck with um, Evil Twin, um, Brainless I really fuck with, a lot of really good stuff on that album, a lot of really good stuff. And as like time has gone on, like that's the pro if there's a project I'm coming back to, it's Marshall Mathers 1 and 2. And not really that much else, in all honesty. Eminem's hard to come back to for me, because again, he very much is making specific stuff. And that goes for his new project, too. He's still rapping about his personal life, like, extremely personal shit. And that's very hard to listen to, like, when you're trying to... Like, nowadays, I'm much more, like, I'll skim through stuff and, like, pick out the best. Like, most ear-grabbing. Nothing about Eminem is ear-grabbing anymore. It's, unless it's, like, an Ed Sheeran feature that shouldn't even be on his album. Oh god. But yeah, I was really in into Eminem, and Eminem allowed me to get into like basically everyone else. It was Hobson, Eminem, and then like the floodgates opened. Opened. That's when I was like, okay, let's just listen to everybody now. I remember like at the time I only could listen to like a couple of rappers. I could only listen to like Eminem, Hobson, you know, Kendrick, a uh, couple other guys. Maybe a little bit schoolboy Q, a little bit of, I'm sure, trashy shit. But as time went on, like, the floodgates just opened up, and I've slowly, like... Ever since then, I've been, like, a pretty big hip-hop head. Like, I've always listened to hip-hop, and ever since then, like... That's, like, a couple years of just being straight hip-hop, and, you know, I obviously listen to other genres. But I'm, like, a very... I wouldn't say a casual fan, but I'm like, a, I'm a, I'm somewhere in between a novice, like, casual, and like, the like, hip-hop, hip-hop heads, like, I, I want to say the only category, like, I'm really lacking on is like, classic shit, like, I haven't listened to, like, the, like, that much old Jay-Z, and, you know, sure, I listened to Biggie and Pop, but I have, have I really listened to Biggie and Pop? Like, I just know, like, the shit that people play at parties. And people play, like, to, like, show off that they're listening to Tupac and Biggie. Um, and I like Biggie better, by the way, in case anyone was gonna ask. But I don't think I've fully listened to any of their albums. And I haven't, like, gone to listen to, like, um, enough Outkast. Anything, like, that came out before, like, 2010. Or, let's say, like, 2008. Like, I'm severely lacking on. Like, all the old Nas shit. All the old, um, like... All the, like, other 100 rappers that I'll see, like, in top 100 rappers list. And I'll be like, I don't have anything. Like, Lauren Hill. All those people. Like, I really need to take the time to listen to them. But it's a lot harder. Because my ear isn't, like, adapted to that yet. Uh, but maybe one day I'll be able to listen to that. But once I got into hip-hop that allowed me to cross over into all the other genres like pop music is like i grew up listening to prince and like michael jackson that before if anything actually that's like my earliest music listening like my mom playing michael jackson and prince in the car and ever since then like i've like i've heard top 50 radio in the background 
and that's always allowed me to kind of like understand it and so the subgenres of pop music were easy to understand like charlie xcx carly ray jepsen lord all those people i was able to easily grasp onto and i was able to get into some of those artists like i like lord i like um even like smaller stuff within the pop genre purity ring i really like braids i really like i really like a lot of different styles of pop music and if anything like r&b it has been like the biggest like explosion for me like in the past couple years what with the weekend uh artists like black bear frank ocean a lot of r&b guys like i'm and pretty much hip-hop in general has become more r&b-ish now that artists like drake well you know i would see listen to drake too and kendrick all of those guys even kendrick they are more they're singing a lot more and they are much more like even guys like post malone post malone isn't even like a rapper he sings throughout the majority of his songs so he might as like if we're if r&b is just like black people pop music then like what is post malone like he's taking the black music which is you know hip-hop which has been black culture and you know he's obviously not a part of that you know he wears like alice in chains t-shirts he wears like metal music t-shirts and he's obviously white and doesn't know that much about hip-hop so like where does he fall like is he r&b is he just pop do we just label him as hip hop because that's what he wants to be called? It's you know it's it's a it's a strange thing, but hip hop, pop, R and B, those are my like three big genres. And uh, like obviously you know I was still connected to rock music. I still listen to rock music. I listen to a lot of bands. I really I like so many things. I really like Daft Punk. I really like. Um, a bunch of artists like I'm not gonna scroll through my entire music collection here but you get the idea and that's kind of the origin you know first there was Michael Jackson Prince and then there was Hops and Eminem and that uh, and you know there was my like rock three days grace period and so on and so forth and now I am if you really want to know my like musical journey just just watch my channel uh, my any of my music reviews like that's basically like if there's projects I listen to the most it's whatever I'm reviewing and I really need to review a lot more music I have like three music reviews just sitting in my like to edit folder so I really need to work on those but anyway guys this was a long conversation so I'm just gonna end this video uh, here thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys tomorrow morning with another episode of good morning soul and until then, with that, I leave you.